Uh, give, give Michigan State credit. I thought <clears throat> their defense just was stifling today. Certainly our offense, um, you know, was was to, to be uh, – can be blamed for sure. But um, uh, give them credit. I thought their defense and, you know, they're, they're playing at a, a much slower pace this year, and I just don't think we handled that very well. And uh, our offensive frustration um, – was significant in the first half, and it dug us too deep of a hole really to climb out of. But give them credit uh, for their defense today. Obviously, we've got a lot to uh, learn from in this game before we play them a second time and just move them forward in general. Chris, do you think uh, your team is starting to feel the same maybe stress or noise that's really unavoidable out there during a tough stretch like this? Yeah, how could they not, right? You know, Clay, how could they not? You know, it's. It's uh, it's part of it. It's part of being in the public, you know, public eye. You know, it's part of playing uh, at, uh, at a major, you know, university. Um, you know, I think they do a, probably a good job, you know, to some degree blocking it out. Um, but you know, it's, that's a lot to ask. So the answer is uh, throw yourself in your work and um, focus on the work. So difficult and stifling about the Michigan State defense. You mentioned, I mean, with three pointers, you guys attempted 29. It seemed like it was hard to get to the paint today. I couldn't get to the paint. Yeah, we, we, you know, we knew how. Um, you know, obviously, as coaches, uh, I should have gotten them more ready for their defense. So uh, I'll take full responsibility for that. I should have, I should have clearly had a better plan uh, for uh, uh, for our offensive attack. Um, you know, the game here last year was considerably different. It was a much faster paced game, and, um, but uh, clearly, uh, you know, this this plan uh, we just we needed to get better with it. But they we just had no no opportunities to uh, get to the paint, and then I think the missing uh, some of the open shots there really led to us, you know, playing frustrated and tight offensively. You can't play a good offense like that. Chris, you mentioned a couple of days ago that you you'd want your guys to shoot more threes. Um, Obviously, it didn't go well today. You didn't shoot a trick well last game either. Like, yeah. uh, I, I guess at this point of year, are you still searching for what this team's offensive identity should be when you know it was such a slog two point efficiency wise, and then the last game yeah. it was about as good as you could be possibly two points, and now you're not making threes. Yeah, our two point field goal percentage, Bill, as you know, has has uh, not been good, and that's kind of been a foundational piece for our highly efficient offenses the last couple of years. And we really struggle with our two-point finishes. It's last in the Big Ten, or it was last in the Big Ten. And that's so uncharacteristic. I, I think some of that is just a byproduct of we're, we're, we're not playing off two feet enough. We're playing in crowds. You know, whatever you have to reason for that, um, you know, inexperience, whatever. Um, we, we clearly have got to, got to coach that better. I think I do want to shoot more threes. Today, today was, was probably too many. Um, and we'll make some that we just missed today. I really believe we'll make some that we missed today. I think some of the misses were a byproduct of, of just the frustration of it being a low scoring game and us just not adjusting to that. Um, but, uh, you know, do I need to look at maybe, um, you know, playing our better shooters more, or look, at, look at a different, you know, lineup in terms of, I, I don't know, uh, we need to look at it. But clearly, uh, the space. Uh, it's hard to come by right now against some teams. With, with a guy like Justice, um, who shot the ball pretty well for you guys his first year here, he's like 23% right now. He's still taking like three per game. He was one for six today. Do you at some point have to tell him to stop shooting, even if he's open, or, or how do you manage that? Yeah, Bill, you know, we've, we've, we've looked at him in practice, and he's, you know, he's pretty consistently a solid shooter. I wouldn't call him a great shooter, but a solid shooter. And I think for this team, uh, if our shooting was better at other positions, and I think we had, you know, he didn't really need to take many threes on that team, if you remember who we had on that team. Uh, you had Justin, you had Dwayne, you had EJ who was shooting it well, five man who could shoot threes. So he could take wide open ones, and he had a lot of wide open ones. Uh, but he's a better shooter than what he shot right now. Um, you know, I didn't have issue with, uh, some of his shots, I think he needs to take keep taking rhythm ones. Um, for this team, Bill, for this team, he does. Uh, Coach, you, you've gone with a lot of different uh, starting lineups, you know, recently in this stretch here. But Roddy getting the start today, playing 26 minutes. 
uh, what did you think you know made his game uh, something you wanted to employ in, in this matter? Well, you know, I'd like to play Roddy and Sean together uh, quite a bit. Um, I think for us moving forward, I want to give that a look, a little bit more ball handling. Um, you know, adding another Roddy can make open shots. Um, so I, I should have played him more last game. I felt like I should have played him more last game. And I, I just like the the blend of, of defense uh, with kind of the offensive group uh, that we had, that, that mix of the starting lineup. Obviously, it was young, but um, you know, we'll see if that continues. Chris, earlier in the season, we talked a little bit about transition defense with teams speeding you up. And then today, you're saying Michigan State intentionally slowing it down. You said made it difficult. Do you mind expanding on that a little bit? Well, I, you know, their tempo, when you look at it, is just, it's it's much different than what it's been in the past. Um, uh, you know, we're we're playing the fastest we've played in in our six years, but we're the, we're the least efficient we've been, or the second least efficient we've been in our, in our six years. Uh, and some of that, uh, there's a multitude of reasons for that. There, I think, they, they will try to strike in the first six seconds, but I thought today they played very deliberate, uh, maybe more so than I remember Tom's teams playing. Um, they're just a little bit of a different makeup um, but obviously Tom's a Hall of Famer and he's having success uh, with this group for a reason. So it just, I think it frustrated us when we weren't making shots and then we were playing, you know, 24 seconds of, of defense. Uh, this group has gotten frustrated with that a couple times. Uh, there was another game this year where we got frustrated in the Minnesota game. I think we, we got frustrated with that. And then following up with what Griffin asked about Roddy, um, getting his second start today. Do you see this as a thing where he's probably going to be starting moving forward? And then also for this last stretch of games here down the stretch, what parts of his game do you want him to work on and improve on the rest of the season? You know, I think his ball handling, decision making. Rod Roddy right now needs to impact us with his defense. And um, I, I think he had some good moments and um, uh, today, but he's got to be able to impact the game with his defense and his energy and his rebounding. And then out of that will come some good offensive moments like he had tonight. I thought he had a couple plays where he made the right pass um, and made an open open three at the end of the, the first half. But I thought, you know, I thought Roddy did some good things. We've got to get Bryce, um, you know, this is now a few games here when you include kind of the Wisconsin game where we just have to continue to get him uh, back into a better rhythm really starting with the Wisconsin game, and, I, and that's our job as coaches to work to make that happen. Chris, in the last, there's been some games recently where you guys get down, but then you come back, you get to kind of like that eight point to four point window, yeah. and just can't get yeah. over the hump. Turnovers, poor shots. Scared may not be the right word, but are the guys, once they get in that window, maybe getting tentative, or oh, we're right there, and then it just kind of falls apart? Does that question make even sense? No, it does, it definitely makes sense. Um, I think maybe there's some degree of, of tentativeness, um, but to your point, some of it is, um, we just have not always had quality possessions. When we've, when we've been up four or six, we'll take a contested shot when, um, uh, you know, in, in some cases, probably I need to slow them down more than what, what we do right now. I think our understanding right now of of winning possessions when it's a two or a three possession game um, is just not where it needs to be, and that's uh, you know my responsibility to get them there. We, we fight some things too much. Is that something you work on in practice? Is it more just game situational? Both. Yeah, I think I think we've certainly worked on it in practice. We've broken it down in film. We broke it down in film again this morning of us executing offensively and defensively late by just playing together offensively and defensively and moving the ball. Um, but um, we've got some habits that we probably need to break. Chris, you, you've seen Joey Hauser for, for several years in the league now, and I'm wondering, how is he a different player when you watch previous games in this game, just sort of, and, and how does that change the, the scout, if anything, for him? Where, where is he a problem that he, he wasn't maybe in years past? He's more confident shooter, more confident offensive player. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing I've seen with, with him. You know, he was a really, he was a, I mean, I recruited him out of high school, it seemed like a decade ago. He was a really, really good player coming out of high school. And obviously, they got him on the transfer. A really good player, really talented. So it doesn't surprise me that he's turned into a really good Big Ten player. Um, I think Tom's done a great job with him in just terms of feeding him 
with with some confidence because he's he did not play this confident, in my opinion, last year. So every team starts a year, particularly here, with NCAA aspirations, Big Ten championship aspirations. At this point, that doesn't look realistic. What's what in your mind is an attainable achievement for this team that you want to see with what's left of the season that would enable you to feel like you gain something and have momentum in a good direction at the end of the year? Yeah, I think it's it's hard because it's gonna. Um, it's a good question. I'm just gonna, you know, it's gonna be a kind of a um, general response. Growth, I think, the big is the biggest thing. I think growth in the areas of sharing and moving the ball, Bruce. Uh, growth in the air. I thought we had some really, really good defensive possessions today. Really good. I thought we played honestly good enough defense for 30 minutes to give ourselves a chance to win. Our offense was just was just, you know, rough. Um, so uh, I think. Uh, growth in the areas of of that we've talked about moving the ball, um, sharing the ball, um, finding the the the, uh, the open man, rebounding the ball a little bit better than what we have consistently, um, and then having a, a you know a consistent defensive um, forty minutes with multiple sustaining efforts. Um, those are the things that we've we've addressed. Chris, he was asking about when you cut it to five and then just trying to get a stop. I think you did yeah. get a stop and then you came down the other end and Bryce misses a shot. And uh, on Zed's put back, it looked like there might have been some contact around the rim. Did you see anything? Um, it was hard to tell from my viewpoint. You know, I've, I've got to go back and, and look at it. I think um, I did not think the game was officiated poorly. I thought it was officiated really well. I've got to look at that specific one. There weren't a whole lot of fouls called in this in this game. Um, uh, in some ways, that's that's we just weren't able to infu- impose ourselves offensively. Um, you know, it was a criti- critical stretch there. Uh, I can't remember how much time was left. I think it was in the middle of the second half. Am I right on that? Yeah. Cut it to five, and I just I think during that stretch, and we just did not have enough quality possessions. We gave up a transition three, and we had we had a couple of poor shots. And, and with the, I think this is the second straight game where he's really grabbing that shoulder and it's not a contact thing, he's reaching or something like that. Is What are the evaluations like with him as far as, is he healthy enough to keep playing and do you have to start, um, do you have to consider shutting down lower, smaller role, things like that? Yeah, I think the only way we would shut it down is if he had another significant injury or, or multiple significant injuries with it. I think right now um, it's at the point where, where it's, it's strong enough uh, as determined by our medical team for him to continue playing. I think sometimes when he extends it or when he gets hit, it's painful for him. I give him a lot of credit for you know, for fighting through it. Clearly he's not at his best, um, but um, I think he's fighting through that particular injury.